I just want to let you guys know that I am wearing New York Yankee pajama pants because social media is always fake because I look like really put together, maybe from like the top up, but really I'm sitting here in some Yankees pajama pants. Also, Charlie's joining us for today's video, so everyone say hi, Charlie. And she sits on the ground. Okay, on the ground, on the chair. Everybody. Welcome to today's video. If you're new here, hi, my name is Destiny. It is so nice to have you guys here. And if you're not new here, hello. It is so nice to have you guys back on my channel today. Thank you so much for even clicking on today's video. So today's video, as you guys can tell by the title of today's video. Okay, I just feel like I'm saying today's video too much. Today's video, I said it again. Today we are doing a book recommendation for books to get you out of a reading slump. These aren't like my five star books, like books that I absolutely love. These are just books that I feel like are quick, easy to read, and are just going to get you out of a slump super quickly. So that is what today's video, that's what these books that we're talking about today are. You guys have been asking me for this video. It's been one of my most requested videos along with my Kindle video, talking about my Kindle, which I do plan on doing. I think that's one of the next videos that I'm going to upload. I put up a poll on my Instagram asking you guys which video you guys wanted to see first, this one or my Kindle video, and a lot of you guys voted for this video, so that's why we're doing that today, but don't worry, the Kindle video will be out. But if you guys want to participate in polls and stuff like that, I try to be very active over on my Instagram, so you guys can go follow me over on my Instagram at des.sitster. I do a lot of interactive content on there to get you guys really engaged with my channel, so go ahead and follow me over there if you want. If not, that's okay too. Oh my God, wait, this is like kind of perfect. Hold on. Let's talk about these 10 books today. I wanted to do 10 and just picked these books and didn't even realize that I actually did 10, so awesome. So the very first book that we have is Shift by Angie Hockman. Now, I read this book last year in the winter time, which I think is one of the perfect times to read this book because, you know, kind of in the winter, especially if you live somewhere more cold, you're a little bit like seasonal depression, you're just surrounded by a bunch of bare trees. And so I read this one, it was just a super fast and easy read, it's not that long. And it is workplace romance, enemy to lovers and they are like rivals within the workplace. Did I already say that? I don't know. But it takes place on a cruise ship. Henley and Graham. Graham? Graham? I don't know how to pronounce his name but I think it's Graham. So they are the main characters. They both work for this cruise line and they are both I think like marketing managers which one of the things of reasons why I picked up this book was because I was actually applying to college to be a marketing manager. So I thought that this book was super cool. <laughs> now I'm not in college and uh, didn't absolutely love this book. But anyway, it was still fine. I think I rated this somewhere around like a three and a half, four. It takes place on a cruise ship. They are like going up against each other for the same job and they both have to go on the, their company's cruise to figure out ways to market it to more people. And it's the scenery is so amazing and I really, really liked the main guy in this book. So I definitely recommend this for you guys who wanna get like more of like a tropical and you guys like the hating game because this book literally is on the back described as the Unhoneymooners meets the hating game. And I do think that it's not as good as those two books in my opinion, but I do think it is a great mix of those two. The next book that I have is The Cheat Sheet by Sarah Adams. They are very quick, easy reads to get through. Like none of her books are extremely long at all. I think this book was like, oh, not even, yeah, not even 300 pages. And it's like incredibly cheesy. This is about Brie and Nathan. Brie is this like ballerina. Nathan is this NFL football player and they have been best friends since high school. They are like genuinely best friends. And it is just kind of like them neither one knows that the other one likes each other but they both like each other and it's dual POV which is amazing I love any book that is dual POV because I really need to know what the other person is thinking you guys know what I'm saying like I need to know like I'm reading about the looks the longing looks that they're giving but like I need to know if they're meaning it you know what I'm saying but anyway this was just such a quick easy fun little read and it was extremely cute and cheesy and I love to clog up my arteries sometimes reading books like this the next book is 
is I mean, I just said two of the romances, but this is one of my favorite romance books. It's a little bit longer, but it I read this within a night. Like, I'm not even joking. It took me no time. It was so easy to get through. That is The Love Hypothesis by Allie Hazelwood. If you have not yet read this book, I don't know why, and I don't know how, because this book is absolutely everywhere. I read it within one night. Like, I stayed up all night. It was one of those books where I was like, okay, I'm going to read just one more chapter and then I'm going to be done. And I could not stop reading it. So this book is just extremely addicting. This is about Olive and Adam. Olive is a student at col in college. She's going for a PhD. Yeah. Third year PhD candidate. Adam is one of the professors. He's not like one of her professors, but he's a professor at the college. And basically she is trying to prove to her best friend that she's genuinely over this guy that she like had a few dates with that her friend likes but her friend doesn't want to betray Olive. So Olive's trying to prove to her friend that she doesn't like him. So she just like her friend, she tells her friend that she's going on a date and her friend sees her in the lab and she's scared that her friend's gonna like find out that she's not actually on a date. So she just kisses the guy that's the closest to her and that happens to be Mr. Adam Carlson. And they strike up this fake dating, blah, 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 blah. It's awesome. Fake dating takes place kind of like school, women and STEM. It's a very good and easy read, even though it is a little bit longer. I think it's awesome. This next one, I genuinely think is such a easy read to get you out of the book slump because one, I love the storyline of this book and two, the format of this book is like nothing that I have read before. That is Daisy Jones and The Six. I absolutely love this book. It's one of my five star reads. So basically to tell you guys, it is like, you see, it's kind of like this, if you were reading an interview, like if you're watching an interview, how they're talking back and forth, that's all it is. So it's super easy to literally just like get through the pages. On top of that, it's only like a little bit over 300 pages. And it is basically about this band back in the 60s, 70s-ish era. Something I love about Taylor Jenkins Reid is that she always kind of writes from like uh, past tense. So I'm pretty sure Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo is like 50s through 70s. This is more like 60s, 70s rock band. Like it is so awesome. And I just absolutely love all the characters. I've heard that the audiobook for this is amazing too. So maybe if you are in the mood for an audiobook, you could definitely read the audiobooks. I've heard nothing but great things about it. The next one I'm going to recommend is a series that I have recently read, but that is The Inheritance Games and The Hawthorne Legacy. Now the reason that I'm talking about both of these in particular is because they are both absolutely amazing. So I definitely recommend you to read The Inheritance games but I genuinely also definitely recommend you to read the Hawthorne legacy this is more if you're in the mood for like a mystery ish except it's not like a thriller it's just genuinely like solving riddles and stuff like that and puzzles it is so awesome honestly for me it feels like you're inside of a game of clue I've seen a lot of people relate it back to knives out because it's a very similar storyline but I felt more like you were in a game of clue and it was absolutely so amazing now the reason that I am talking about both of these is because I I absolutely love the Hawthorne Legacy. Like I liked the first book, but I loved the second book. They are such fast reads. When I tell you guys, I got done with this within like four hours because they're very short chapters. And since this is a YA book, it is not written in a super complex way. Like I genuinely was just like, reading through these pages like it was absolutely nothing and not to mention the storylines absolutely addicting there's always something happening so you're never bored the next book that i have is blackout and this is actually by a bunch of different poc authors which i recently read this month and absolutely loved it it is basically a collection of short stories so each short story is written by a different author which i thought was absolutely amazing like the structure of this book and all of the stories had very rich history and culture within it which was super super awesome to read and the reason that i'm recommending this is because like i said it's literally a it's a collection of short stories that all takes place within within the same night but it's a bunch of different characters so one you're getting a bunch of different authors that you may love and two you are getting so many different characters so many different storylines it is awesome all around it's super easy and this also only took me like two to three hours to read and then we're going to talk about some Colleen Hoover books some Colleen Hoover books that I don't see as much as the other ones that I definitely would recommend you guys to read because they're super fast and easy reads I mean I feel like all of Colleen Hoover's books are super fast easy reads 
but I feel like when you're in a book slump, you don't really want to pick up a book that's going to be really emotionally heavy or very complex. You just kind of want something that's going to be easy to get through. So I have two Colleen Hoover books. The first one is Confess by Colleen Hoover. Now this is definitely not one of my favorite Colleen Hoover books because I am just a more of a fan of like emotionally deep romances. But this one was honestly just such an easy read. I'm pretty sure I read this within like three hours. It's a little bit over like I'm talking about it's not even 300 pages actually so it's super easy and fast to get through it is about auburn and it is about owen owen runs this art studio and auburn is currently kind of like tight for money she's in this really hard situation so she needs another job and she sees that owen has a help wanted sign outside of his studio so she decides to help him because he basically has these like art shows where he has people place their confessions into a slot and he will then paint them and people come to his art show and buy them. Did, did you get that? Yeah. You guys know Colleen, if you read her books, that they are just always have plot twists that connects in some sort of crazy way. So this book does not fall short of that. And then the other Colleen Hoover book that I'm talking about is Heartbone. This book just takes you out of, like that's what reading is about. It just taking you out of your own mind, placing you somewhere else. So this takes place in Texas, but it takes place like at, like at the beach. And it's so, uh, the setting of this book I loved because I went on a vacation this past summer to Seaside Florida and it just reminded me so much of that so it also kind of took me back to like my vacation this summer that I really enjoyed so I just I loved it for like my own personal reasons but also the storyline is so good it is about Bea and Samson which can I talk about I love those names like I don't I've always loved the name Samson like such like a weird whatever but i genuinely have always loved that name Bea has kind of lived this really hard life with her mom of like poverty and just kind of you know doing anything she can to survive and samson comes from this wealth so they do not kick it off at first basically Bea has to go stay with her dad for the summer and her dad lives in texas and she meets samson and they just kind of are like whatever we're just gonna have this casual relationship and obviously it turns into more and i just absolutely loved it the vibes everything storyline characters all there, all tens, so Heartbones by Colleen Hoover. And the very last book that I'll be talking about for today's video is also another like mystery thriller type of book. And if you have not read this book, I'd be very surprised because I feel like so many people have. I know I was a little late to the bandwagon. That is A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. I picked this up a few months ago, I think back in November or something like that, September, somewhere around there and absolutely loved it. I have yet to read the other two. I actually have the other two on my TBR card, but you know, like you kind of have to be in the mood for a mystery and thriller, but this is definitely one that if you are in the mood for it, I would definitely recommend. It's YA, so for those of you who kind of are more, I'd say sensitive in a light way, who don't really read such um, dark things and don't really want to do like, you know, maybe like a uh, grown adult thriller that gets a little bit more mature, I would definitely recommend this because it's super easy. It's literally her doing a school project on a girl that had got murdered at her school and everyone thinks that the boyfriend did it and she does not believe that the boyfriend did it. So for her school project, she's basically a whole detective and you're following her through this whole entire investigation and getting people to help her. And it is so, so good. So I would definitely recommend this book. And I haven't read the other two in the series, but I've heard that those are also very good, so. Okay guys, those are all 10 books that I am recommending to you guys today. If you guys have other recommendations for others in the comments, please feel free to comment down below. I love that we are all our own little book community that are always like recommending books to each other. Thank you guys so, so much for watching today's video. If you guys liked today's video, then go ahead and hit that like button down below. And if you guys liked me and want to see more book content, lifestyle, things like that, then you guys can go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below in the notification bell outside to be notified whenever I upload videos. I try to upload as much as I can, keep the ideas rolling, and then, you know keep you guys keep you guys locked in and entertained but that is it for today's video and until then i'll see you guys when i see you peace